years ago, uh, I, was, I was in Modesto, California, and I preached a sermon at this church. I was invited to, to preach at this church. And I went in, and there was about 250 people there. And I got up, and I didn't know what I was going to talk about, which is not uncommon. I mean, I trust that the Spirit would give me what to speak at that moment. And what I talked about was the fact, and what I said to them was, uh, I said, this building is not the house of the Lord. This is not the house of the Lord. Okay, it's, and I said, I don't think this church is growing as it should because of a lack of good preaching. And then I said, I, I don't really expect to see revival. I, don't, I honestly don't expect to see revival in this place. Well, at that point, there were 250 people who had taken in a breath and didn't let it out. I mean, mean, it was. They inhaled. It it was quiet. It it was. But stop and think about that. We we, we call these buildings the house of the Lord Mm -hmm. when Scripture says clearly that it is not. God said, I will not dwell in a house built by the hands of man. And he says that in the Old Testament. He says it a couple of times in the New Testament. Where has he chosen to dwell? Ta-da! Inside of me. Mm -hmm. Inside of you, inside of you. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, not, not some brick and mortar thing. And if you, believe, if you don't believe that, you will act differently inside the walls of that building than you do outside in the world when you go out there, right? Yeah. And the fact is, I said, you know, this church isn't growing because of a lack of good preaching. And I, then I stopped and I said, you know what? When I said that, you thought I was talking about your pastor. Not at all. It's not growing because you're not going out into the streets. You are sitting out there in the congregation. You're not going into the, into the highways and byways. You're not going into your workplace. You're not going into your store, the stores you frequent and sharing the love, the good news of Jesus Christ. Because we are all called to do that. We're that's, all called to do that's that. That's what proclaim is, means to preach. Well, right? you know what? And go, go get out your little Greek concordance and you will see that there's no difference between in Greek in the New Testament, there's not a difference between the word preach and proclaim. Right. And we're all called to proclaim it. That's right. You know, God called us. What Peter says, it says it so beautifully. We've all been called out of darkness into this marvelous, into his marvelous light to proclaim the excellencies of Jesus, of him who he called us out of darkness, right? If we were all out there sharing, if we were, because you're in that building to get equipped to go out, In every place in your life, you are to share the word of God and the love of God. And if we are all being faithful to do that, to fulfill the ministry that every one of us has, you'd see more growth in the church. But somehow, and I'm going to tell you, it is the work of the enemy that he has convinced us that ministry is constrained into the building. Unless, of course, on your business card, it says that you're an evangelist. And the interesting thing about that is it says that God has God has appointed evangelists to equip the saints for the work of service. You, you can work that one out. Have a little conversation with Jesus, okay? We are His hands and we are His feet. Here's the good news to everyone.